Okay, it's Roger Mudfossil University, and today we're going to be talking about Mr. Michael Tellinger, who has offered, well, he got a hold of me and offered to um, to test some of the samples of mud fossils that he's discovered over there in South Africa. Now, he sent me a whole batch of things to look at, and he's got a bunch of stuff, and, 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 and some of it's exceptional, and one thing is very exceptional, and that is the no-toe foot. We, I, I discovered no-toes about five or six years ago and uh, and I've been researching them ever since and all of a sudden poof they're everywhere so he's found one and uh, we have another researcher out in the Midwest uh, in Missouri it's um, Tish Egerton she's got this uh, fabulous examples and, and they're coming in from all over the world Australia South Africa um, all over the United States and there is more than one style of no-toe foot there appears to be a minimum of two and uh, Mr. Tellinger has the sleeker style foot. I have the squared off foot, and I will show you the difference between the two. He's going to be doing the research. I'm going to be assisting him with not uh, physically going there or doing anything to involve myself in his research, strictly to advise him on what we did and where the blood is to be found and how it's to be gathered and how it's to be be sure that it's not contaminated and all the things that, that, that are necessary to do the job correctly and then he'll present it to uh, to a, a scientific lab and they will certify exactly what my certifications were. All right, there's three DNA tests here in this particular report and it talks about how it was done and the different um, bacterial DNA extraction and all I and mean, it's very very detailed if you want to read it it's up on if you go to mudfossils.com and and go to the bottom left you'll be able to click on a link to this and um, and I'll, I'll give this to Mr. Tellinger and he can display all this stuff I'm going to be giving him you know all of my information now it comes down it does a whole bunch of stuff talks about this and that and shows all these little things and barcodes and colors and everything but the, the main thing is they're all human mitochondrial DNA, and it's it's it, and it was see it, it was certified by the lab report. I mean it's 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 a certified report verified by Tom, a laboratory director, Helix Biolabs, and then this was stuff was sent off to um, Eaton Biolabs in New Jersey, and they did the. Uh, I don't know exactly what they did, but they, they um, verified that it, they matched it up in all the extant and existent d d different types of DNA, every creature there is to know, and it matched up 100% with Homo sapien mitochondrial cytochrome B and Homo sapien mitochondrial D loop region, 100%, no misses. Uh, and it was like a hundred base pairs and they said it was dense DNA it was not weak because we took it directly from the arterial blood supply and some of this stuff is is highly bloody it's not like where you scrape something off the edge of something you hope you got DNA absolutely not you see that that's two lungs this one here was DNA certified by helix paleo labs and it was also certified it was cat scanned by Jesse Garant and Associates they do racing car engines and industrial equipment best people you will ever 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 have CAT scans and the best people you ever want to work with however let's go on this is a bloody lung this is a bloody lung we took the, the uh, uh, DNA sample from deep inside the reddest bloodiest part and this one when it came out of the earth it bled like this I mean it bled literally bled like you stuck it with a knife this is not something that's uh, just uh, you scrape it off the edge and you just hope something happened. No, absolutely not. This is no question whatsoever what is being being submitted and what's being analyzed is not anything that's contaminated. And and I talked to the lab director and he verified everything. He said, yeah, it's very dense. No question whatsoever. So why can't this be examined? This is all opinion. It says, oh, this has all got to be crazy. It's not crazy. It's correct. Academia stays away from it. Mr. Tellinger is going to make his own assessment if we have two validations of the same type of thing I don't know what his source is going to prove because these are actually like human uh, lungs now I did do them from giants too from extremely large giants and they were also the same exact DNA mitochondrial DNA there's all kinds of DNA. well there's two different types there's mitochondrial and then there's nucleic DNA mitochondrial is the mother's DNA that was the same on all of my specimens 
and then we'll have to see what his, his turns up. And the notos are not human beings. They're absolutely not the same as human. They are some other form of hominid, but not human. Okay, I'll try to run through this pretty quick. Um, that is the, the heel bone in a human. You see the calcaneus tendon, uh, the calcaneus area here, the heel. Then you have this strap that leads up here. You see it up here? And then you have tendons that go up, and then in the back, you see that one right there? That goes down to the calcaneal, to the heel bone, to the calcaneus, and it's a calcaneal tendon. And it attaches to the muscle up there. It's under extreme tension, and that gives you the spring in your foot. And when they snap, they sometimes will break, and they will fray right at the top and make a wrinkle zone. And they break flat as a pancake in the in the mud fossils. Now. This is what I want you to take away from this. Look at this structure. Look at that strap. Look at the circle here. Look at the, the, the tendon that's coming down. That's the calcaneus, heel bone. Look at this. You see this here? Let's see if you can see that a little closer. Right, look at the heel bone of that right there. You see that round circle? You see the strap coming up? It's the same as that over there. It's identical. Now, and, and there's a bump on the bottom. That bump on the bottom is your, literally your heel. It's, it's a little lump that comes off your heel, a little um, bony structure. Now, but this is an absolute circle here. And there's that strap going up, and it goes up to here. All right? Now, you see these, these I'm calling them torsion springs. And I understand how they work. As, as, as this is in here, that's the heel. The foot's going this way. The toes are coming out this way. You come up on this. It makes this spring go up, and it compresses here. There's a patty, gooey-looking spot right there. It compresses here, and then it double compresses. So it comes up, and then it comes up again in, a, in, a, in an extreme arch. And its natural tendencies come back, come back and then you flatten back out again. And they have an extreme arch. Now, this is the one that I originally found here in Connecticut in, in uh, about 2012, somewhere around there. And, um, and it is perfectly squared off. And I mean, these edges are, are literally sharp. Now, you notice the, they, have, they all have this break in the back here. And that is where the fibula comes down and attaches. And the only thing that holds is there is a ligamentation between the two bones. There's almost no attachment there at all. It's only there literally to let you rock your foot. Now, you see it's missing on this one, the same thing, missing here, missing here. They will all have it missing. Now, this is a different type of foot than this foot. You see this snaky little thing on the back here? I'm going to show you Michael Tellinger's foot has a little articulation in that that gives it an extreme understanding of how this works and how that foot can do this just like this foot can do the wiggling like that. And that, it's a, it's a very interesting um, um, particular design, it really is. All right, this is absolutely exceptional. Tish Egerton in Missouri. Um, a few months ago, after just seeing one of my videos, went out and within 20 minutes found this. She went out and found all this stuff all over the place. And not only that, she found this a, a pile of these things in one area. She's got bones and tools and all kinds of things, petrified organs from the in a, a, a sacrum and all kinds of things. Uh, extremely interesting sight. Now, not only that, it's so interesting that it's a mind blower. You see this under here? If you could see that close, that looks like a wing nut. It looks like a wing nut to me. Somebody put that on there. You see it? I don't know what to say. I know that this is going to be filled in with a, a gummy pad on the bottom, which is called gummite. And it's a rubbery thing, and I'll show you some and other ones, bigger ones, and it's very obvious. But this is Tish's. Now, she, you see how this is a whiter material? Mine is very brown. Mine, I believe, is in more of a, of a acid or lower pH. I, I, I think hers is in some kind of caustic, or hers it might even be an acid, and the acid etched it out. I have no clue. It should be investigated. Look and see what the site, what the conditions are, and, and, and so forth. But 
you can see, you see these little sockets, they're like little sausages fit in there, the toes, I'm telling you, it's a very interesting, and the whole block moves up and down, they're all encased in a mass, hers have started to erode, uh, mine are not eroded whatsoever, oh, here's mine, there's a whole batch of them there, well, it's not only one, but that's all different pictures, now, it looks like a clog from the side, from the bottom it looks like this however this would have been covered in here this is eroded out or, or broken off however you want to call it now you see I, I talk about the uh, the fibula being broken off they all break off and that's the side looking from the back and that's the heel bone and this little area right there is where the bone is was uh, and you see that little black spots? That's called bone black. It's a it's ferritin. It's a, it's a FeO2 blood versus FeO3. FeO3. You can see a little reddish. It turns white after it leaks out. You see, this is like a, the same thing you have on the front of your foot. It's like a a red blood supply that runs all around there to feed the toes. They have similar anatomy, but not exactly the same. And then, of course, the springs, and then, but it's a standing upright guy. <laughs> Confused? All right, here's, the, here's the, the one with the wing nut. This is what you see on the bottom. If you can see that fluffy looking stuff, you see the fluffy looking stuff? That is like a pad. It's just, I literally like putting on a, a fluffy little pad on the bottom of your foot. You see the difference between this? That's the skin of the side of the foot and then this. The same thing here, the skin on the side of the foot and then you get that fluffy pad. And these pads are missing on that one. And Tisha's stuff is extremely eroded and it's, it puts it right into the middle of it like you were doing a CAT scan. It's, it's absolutely perfect for what I wanted to see. And it is eroded and it shows the colors of the metals. It's extremely attractive to magnets, which are mine as well. This, I believe, is all of the bone, uh, the bones and body parts that this body consisted of, this guy's foot. And I believe that's the heart right there. So this stuff, and, and they all separate along the fa fascia lines. So Michael Tellinger is going to do his work out there and I am going to assist him. And if we can make this thing show up uh, in, in history, it's, uh, it needs to be done because now it's being avoided and ignored when it is, there's no question about it. It just needs to be, people need to, to accept it, to look at it. You know, you need to accept it. I don't care if you accept it or not. It has no, nothing to do with me. But for somebody to say that I'm crazy because they won't look at something, that's not, that's not going to work. So here it is. All right, it's pretty obvious there's two different styles of feet here. This is the sleek looking rounded effect here. And I'm not sure, it, I can see the spring looking assemblies in here to some degree. And I can see the toes now have started to seem like they're coming out from the, the type of foot this was. This is a different style of no toe, very extremely blocky. This looks like it's starting to turn into actual toes. But you see the pads that are underneath every one of the toes? I have other things that, um, that I have shown that uh, there are toes that sit right on top of these pads. And, and this is just a different style than, this is going to be called the Preston no toe. And the Preston no toe is a squared off flat looking no toe. This might end up being called the uh, South African Noto or the Tellinger Noto. I don't know what you want to call it, but it, it's uh, it, that's not his. It's similar to his, and uh, he has a more rounded one. And I, it, it, his actually is more like mine. It's very difficult to tell. As they start to erode, you lose some of it. So it needs to be looked at deeply because it affects much more than just a, a monkey bone or some curiosity this is our history it's a true history so it should be looked at but that's what we're going to ask for so i'm going to leave it at this uh and then we'll i'm going to have a, a series of videos that i'll make available to uh to michael and um and um and i will assist in any way i can assist and I would just stand by and watch just like the rest of us and hope maybe he'll be able to do like a television show or something to announce this one way or the other. The guy's an idiot or the guy has a, a, a correct idea. This can only go one way or the other. And I am prepared for either one because, uh, you know, to say that this stuff doesn't exist, it's going to be very difficult. So 
I'd like to see that happen, and I am certainly willing to uh, to to be confronted by anyone that can present any evidence to to dispute the things that I have said for years now, years. And it's not it's ignored because it can't be disputed. I've never had one single challenge, credible challenge. I've just been called a fool. So I'd like to. I'd like to see that change, to be perfectly honest with you. It's not a comfortable feeling after years of being in that condition, knowing that you have something that could very well be correct. So let's see what happens after it, uh, it's, it's seen in, uh, in a multi-layered multi examination rather than just uh, ignoring it. So stay with us, my friends. Mud fossils will change the world. Hey, all my mud fossil friends uh, will understand what we're looking at here. The red and the black is the uh, blood. The red is the, the FeO3 blood, arterial blood. Black is FeO2 blood, the vein blood. Now, you see these little plugs here? I'm going to show you something in a second. You see that little plug there? Similar. Now, look at this pattern right here. You see that? And you see this structure here? That's where the foot set right in there and did its little knuckle job moving around. This is the cradle right here that held this. So this can twist back and forth and, and articulate in this cup. The calcaneus tendon held right here and came up. So the, the, the tibia, which is the big uh, bone in your lower leg comes down and it would sit in here and it would rotate around like a ball and socket in this. This would be able to move back and forth between these two and you see the cup shape here it goes in and out. It's a perfect design but it's completely different from our feet. Our feet have a totally different uh, uh, look to it. Now the other thing I want you to look at is here and here and here. That's where the blood has been forced out through these little spots and it collects there. Uh, it actually congeals there. You see that? We'll be able to get some blood out of these things. See the blood? Look, see the black? That's, that's blood that leaked out of there. Now up here that I believe is also that bone. Whoops. I believe that right there is actually the center of the bone, the marrowish part of the bone. And this is, uh, they, there's names for them, um, but it's where the blood runs heaviest in the bone coming up. So this is something that needs to be examined. And of course, this right here, you see that little lip looking thing? That is the cup that the bone sits, uh, that the, um, the heel bone here sits in and moves around in. That's all I can say. That's what I'm seeing. That's what you're seeing. Michael will do his research on his end. These things need to be cleaned up extremely well, and then they need to be, uh, everything's got to be done correctly, and I'll explain to him how he'll harvest this, uh, the, uh, the stuff to test for the DNA. So, that's what's going to happen, folks. Stay tuned. There's going to be a, a, a series of these videos come out. I guess Michael's going to be doing them on his end, and I will try to assist the best I can on my end. All right, so... Stay tuned.